Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Punk Rock Review, home of a bunch of opinionated crap you don't care about, also the home of the feedback you provide that we don't care about, keeps us on the even playing field, and we like that. Real quick shout out to our sponsor, no one. Someone give us money. Lots of money. And free shit. That's what we want. Money and free shit. Anyhow, moving straight into it today. Today we're going to be doing our, uh, you know, first kind of in-depth part way through, uh, you know, review on a game that, uh, you know, we have been enjoying the hell out of, right? We did a little preemptive review for all one of you that watched that, uh, you know, yeah, a little ways back. Uh, thanks, Ma. Uh, we're going to kind of dive into a little more on, you know, what's surrounding this game and uh, stuff that's kind of gone, you know, positive and negative about it. Uh, you know, especially from like, uh, you know, outlets that we've seen uh, cover it and everything, uh, because we think that the game is still getting a kind of bad rap in a lot of regards for as much good rap as it's getting. But of course, we are talking about the newest, uh, you know, Death Stranding. And, uh, you know, we have to lead this right away saying that, you know, straight up, we are not uh, Hideo Kojima, you know, huge super mega fan uh you know we did not like the metal gear series in its in essence entirety did we play all of them no but we did play the first couple and we played a couple of the latter ones and you know just sneaking around in a cardboard box was never for us so let's get that out of the way right away you know we ain't no fanboys of Hideo Kojima didn't hate the games or you know dislike them to the point where you know we definitely wouldn't try the games uh but they weren't for us uh you know if as far as like any kind of stealth series goes like you know early splinter cell is really kind of where our cup of tea on any of that lied and where you know our interests were peaked in that genre uh but with this game and being in the standalone genre uh you know let's talk about some negatives so you know people have pointed out that the uh, little centers and, you know, townships and stuff that you go to are definitely a little barren and, you know, uninspiring and, you know, very repetitive in nature as far as everything that goes. And we get that, totally get that, uh, and that is very, very true. That is one aspect of the game that, you know, does cost it in its overall, you know, scoring rating system and such that definitely holds back you know a little key aspect of it uh because after you're traversing across you know the great wide open and you get to one of these centers it would be nice if there was some uniqueness and some variedness to it uh as well as some other characters possibly to interact with or anything like that aside from the you know main complaint like holographic and hologram characters and stuff like that that uh you know end up chatting with you here and there uh you know so so that aside the non-varied centers that that is a uh you know a, a negative for the game um they're complete ghost towns and stuff but uh you know something that you have to consider with the holograms though that is a plus is the amount of sheer uh i guess unlockables that you get to unlockables that you you know progressively you know get to do as you you know knock out more and more five stars for different centers and things like that and they allow you access to uh you know their holograms and things like that well you know at any of the little checkpoints or any of the little shelters or you know any of the whatever any other players built where you're allowed to you know actually go in and tweak it uh, they do have some awesome, awesome little holograms that you can add to the actual, you know, shelters, charging stations, whatever, uh, that are just awesome. Like, all of the stuff from Horizon, that stuff's badass. Like, uh, you know, and mad, mad props for, uh, you know, stuff like that. So there is some good to it, even though, uh, you know, as a whole, it is held back or whatever with a negative. So straight up, yep, yeah, very true. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh... Though mostly uh, deserved, there are definitely a few undeserved falls uh, in the game and stuff. And of course, it's trekking through, uh, you know, wilderness and it's, uh, you know, uh, just moving over rugged terrain and such. Uh, and, you know, most of the falls that we have had are well deserved, but there have been a few that are, you know, not deserved. And that can be frustrating, losing all your stuff and things of that nature. Uh, it can also be frustrating if you're going through a BT area or something and you end up getting pulled down when you're not in the mood for it or don't want to and such. But that's how the game goes, you know. It is what it is. You should bring more uh, hematic grenades or whatever the hell those are called. Uh, bring more of those, you'd be all right. Uh, 
let's see what else a plus or minus uh it does have fairly tight controls to the game and that's a that's a plus you know it is better controls than the initial red dead uh you know gta uh spider-man it's better controls than all of those but not by much keep that in mind now you know stuff can be patched or whatever make it better such as in the case of spider-man and most likely red dead too because uh you know aside from a few initial little uh, issues with, uh, you know, targeting something for picking up or something like that or whatever. It seemed to be a little more adjusted, uh, you know, at later playthroughs and stuff. But that's all irrelevant aside or whatever. It does have some fairly good controls right out of the gate. Uh, you know, could they be tighter and more better? Yes, they could, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. The scanner, though. The scanner on traversing, uh, the environment that shows how the landscape is either in your favor or not in your favor for traversing. Uh, that's what sets this apart, man. Uh, you know, it will mark the dangers and the obstacles, uh, you know, right out of the gate um, and kind of uh, make you aware of where exactly is easier to traverse or not. Um, and, you know, I mean, hell, if you go up to a sheer rock face that, you know, is all in red when you hit your scanner and you can't go up it, uh, and you bust a ladder out and you're able to go up it, or you hang a little climbing rope down and you can climb up it, uh, man, you know, it makes traversing very, very interesting. And there's times where, you know, we'll have a truckload of stuff or a backload of stuff and we will just be inching closer and tensed up or whatever, wondering if we're going to make it or not. It is that kind of edge of the seat thrill ride, man, that keeps us going on it. Uh, you know, <clears throat> another aspect, <clears throat> uh, getting parched, might have to take a break. Okay, moving on. Uh, another aspect or whatever that uh, really sets us apart that is very, very unique in concept and creation is the share locker. Yeah, man, to be able to go, you know, on a trek somewhere knowing that you need, you know, an extra gun or, you know, some climbing rope, ladders, uh, you know, blood bags, any of it, and you go in the share locker and wham, bam, someone had, like, you know, donated some stuff, you're able to just pick it up, uh, you know, that's amazing without having to fabricate and make your own equipment, uh, you know, that is, that's remarkable and a very, very, uh, you know, innovative thing to be able to have as much crossover with other players through their cargo and you know entrusting deliveries with other players to get to their destinations and stuff there's a lot of crossover uh you know for it being a not multiplayer game making it a pseudo multiplayer game which of course falls into the strand alone because you're playing by your own self and you know it's the strand genre because you're stranding with other people uh, you know, moving towards a goal, making roads and bridges and things like that. If you can get behind and on board with that, uh, you know, that's the way to go. And, uh, you know, yeah, we're, we're getting pretty late into it and such. But, uh, you know, one of the last but not least things in this little, uh, you know, one here is that, you know, for us, uh, you know, all of the kind of negative stuff about uh, different aspects of the game whether you like the combat, whether you hate the combat, whether you like the BTs, whether you hate the BTs, whether you like the traversing across the wild or don't like the traversing across the wild, the game plays how you want to play it. Uh, you know, for us, it is a glorified, and I mean super glorified, delivery system it's like we are the ceos of our own delivery company and you know we take the orders that we want to we plan the routes that we want to and we go where we want to uh you know with whatever we're able to do that with and you know we've had hours and hours and hours we're probably at least 50 60 hours in on the game and you know about halfway through in essence maybe a little more than halfway through but uh yeah it's amazing it's remarkable uh you know some people yes anyone that hates on the game for reasons a through z that we've listed or anyone else has listed fully justified yep it's a glorified walking simulator whatever uh but tell you one thing this is the best glorified walking simulator that we have ever played and you know for a lot of folks man anyone that's uh you know along the wavelengths as us uh you know probably one of the best things that they played in a good while man uh very unique very uh creative and you know definitely worth checking out so do it or don't we don't care we don't see a dollar of it whether you play the game or not uh you know in fact we don't see a lot of dollars anyway so 
do something to change that. Give us money. Hideo Kojima, uh, you know, having not been a fan before, this game definitely makes us more of a fan for sure and look down the road. And this definitely, definitely sets a nice foundation for a, you know, Death Stranding 2 or something in the Strand Alone genre that, you know, can definitely move on and progress from there. Because like we said in our other, uh, you know, little talk about this, uh, you know, if they utilize the mechanics and the, you know, multiplayer, I don't want to say multiplayer, but, you know, in essence it is a Strand Alone most multiplayer. If they utilize that in some of these other games on the market, those games would go from, you know, 6s and 7s to 10s to 11s. Not really, but, you know, they would they would bump up. Fallout 76, you know, hell, any, any of that stuff, like, yeah, if they utilize those mechanics and, uh, you know, kind of things that, that Kojima Studios and Productions has put on, then, you know, that's definitely, uh, definitely something to consider moving forward in the future, but, anyhow, yeah, long video, someone give us money, uh, Death Stranding, you still get a, uh, uh, R... Because for us, it's really good. Is it the best, best, best game ever? We don't know. Because we haven't played every game ever created. So, someone send us a bunch of free games. Mainly studios. And new games coming out. And money. We want money. Give us money. Have a good one. You probably didn't. We'll catch you next time. Probably won't.